Wrestling fans around the corner around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Smackdown, done. Rampage, in the books. It's 11 p.m., it's Friday night, there's only one place to be. He is Johnny. Fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Inside His Potty with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m. But we're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash, November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you look for the indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms we have some great perks great rewards where you can even meet marty himself there's nothing like it since july of 2020 every week we've brought you the show we need your help to keep on going we tell you without wrestling fans there is no professional wrestling and there's no better time to help the cause now let's keep marty rocking each and every thursday night Wrestling fans, spring kicks off with the in-studio return of the Berserker, John Nord, Thursday, April the 14th, to kick off Back to the 80s Live Wrestling in Legends Fan Fest weekend. The Berserker returns for Wrestling Insider Throwback Thursday tapings, live episodes, a cyber autograph signing, and more. Check out Boston Wrestling's exclusive print that the Berserker will sign to you live on the air. The big man kicks off three big days of action, excitement, and memories. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information wrestling fans vip packages and tickets are on sale now for boston wrestling mwf's back to the 80s live event and legends fan fest saturday april the 16th at memorial hall in melrose massachusetts see and meet wwe hall of famer hacksaw jim duggan three-time wwe tag team champions axe and smash demolition wwe hall of famers tito santana and cowboy bob orton the Wild Berserker, the Indestructible Warlord, Dangerous Danny Davis, and if you great fans step up and get those VIP packages and tickets now, we'll add more 80s WWF Legends. VIPs take part in exclusive Q&A sessions in an 80s Legends group photo before doors open to all fans for an autograph photo fan fest and a night of hot in-ring action for memories that'll last a lifetime while helping our friends from Make-A-Wish. Tell your friends, tell your family, it's the wrestling celebration decades in the making. Lock in the best seats in the party now at bostonwrestling.com. We'll see you live April 16th. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, welcome to another Wrestling Inside is Fabulous Fridays. We're back at our normal time after our early 10 p.m. start due to the uh, the hoops recently on the uh, TNT, and they moved uh, AEW Rampage a little early. Oh, that was two weeks ago, but who's counting when you're having fun? And we do have a lot of fun on this crazy program of ours. We do, we do. We have a lot of fun with Oscar's insight on uh, Monday Night Mission, every Monday night after Raw. Another great guy. Tuesday we had our ECW themed show before Just Incredible took his money and vanished, but anyway. Uh, Wednesday night we have Wrestling Inside, a special edition with rotating legends like D'Lo Brown, The Godfather, Kevin Sullivan, Demolition, Bushwhacker Luke. The list goes on and on. The superstars that'll be with us uh, and a little just over six weeks, Saturday night, uh, April the 13th, April the 16th, I should say, at Memorial Hall in Melrose. are going to be joining us in studio all weekend long. We're going to be having live specials on the 14th and the 15th, leading into the big event on the 16th. It's going to be like a party all week, Johnny. Party with Marty. Well, we're waiting for Marty to recoup from his recent uh, hospital visit, so to speak. Uh, I and hope we're so. going to get season two of Party with Body underway. The he's fans a great are guy. ready to party again. Get better, brother. Get better. Uh, hopefully, he's not overdoing it on those uh, surgically repaired ankles. Oh. I know he's had other problems. He's just. I wish I could just tone him down a little bit. I wish I could take him maybe from a 10 on the Marty scale to maybe a 7. You never do that. I think that would be good for You him. never do that with Marty You Gennetti. can't. Nope. It's impossible. It's he's, impossible. Nope. But anyway, uh, Thursday nights we have throw. 
Throwback Thursdays with the Berserker, which the fans have fallen in love with. Um, John Nord, the Berserker, I, he's been in almost, I don't know if hiding is the right word, up in Fridley, Minnesota, but he wasn't someone that was being used an awful lot. Now the fans have fallen in love with the man and his uh, unique, eccentric, fun, crazy personality all over again. Honest. I never know what, oh, very honest. Honest. Gold-plated. Yeah. She said some comments about the Sheik, uh, which I almost passed out from laughter when he made the comments. Uh, not, I don't know if you're familiar with that story. No. That when they crossed the border, the, uh, the Sheik put his medicine in the Berserker's bag. Oh, I heard that. That was yeah. one of his interviews. I yeah. watched that. Yeah. Well, that's not true, Mr. Dan Marathi. You don't know. I said I didn't ever did that. You be truth. Nah, Nord, you can't see me, Sheik. Astrid Yad. Break your back, make you humble. Well, Nord didn't understand what humble meant. Ooh. And I had to explain it to him. And then Nord went wild at that point. He went, that is so fucking Iranian of you guys. Oh, boy. We don't do oh. that filthy shit here in America. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh Nord. Why are you come here? I oh, we, and then Friday night, like we like to say, you're almost like the father figure of what we do in Boston wrestling. You let the kids run wild during the week. And then you come home and make sure we all go to, He's bed. A great go to bed on time He's and behave a ourselves. great human being. John Nord, well, like he said, hopefully uh, when John was here recently, you two had a chance to uh, converse. As he was very excited to meet you because um, he said he didn't ever remember meeting you in the past. And he had great admiration for your son and everything he's done with the Make-A-Wish kids. It's all and, about uh, my son. He wanted to meet you too. Oh, that's very honorable. Thank you. I don't know if he remembers the punt from hell with Randy Orton, but I, I, I don't think that. the Berserker was watching at that point. I don't think many people are watching. <laughs> well, that's not true. Remember uh, the Taffacina feud when you, uh, you had to put John in his place about the TV ratings from some of your Raw appearances? Yeah, Bar Rescue. Yeah. I, you and John had a little social media war. We had a lot of fun with that. Yes. I hope John enjoyed Taffacina. it. Taffacina. I hope he enjoyed Taffacina. that. Taffacina. Yep. I, I wouldn't mind seeing that again. Well, contact John Taffs and see if he's interested. Well, do you think maybe he could rescue Cam Sagami after the beating that you gave him? <laughs> Cam Sagami. Cam said it was the worst beating he took since his ass two weekends before, but that's a different story I, um, for a different I, time. All I remember was JTG's boot nailing him. And I mean <laughs> nailing him in the face. You know how I know he get nailed? How do you know? Because I had put my hand in the way. <laughs> Bang! I, I, and my hand took care of Zagami. It was like, whoa! I tell you what, man, that was fun. Um, but I really didn't, well, we didn't hurt him that bad. That bad. Not he, bad. He didn't have to go to the hospital. We hurt his pride. Well, that wouldn't be the first time, but anyway. Uh, I, I would love to see John Taffer involved with things here. Yeah. He's a, a man that does a lot of great work rescuing people in bars around the country. <laughs> but you two shooting on each other on Twitter was a thing of beauty. Oh, I, I don't know what that word means. Uh, we always put a lot of hard work I will, yeah, I, uh, yeah. No, but I mean, you talk about, I, I would think, imagine him as the general manager on Raw or SmackDown or AEW with his feistiness and that large I'll be great. personality. He's He'd just... be perfect. Yeah, I have a, I, he's, I, he's missing the boat. He's great at rescuing Boz. It's what he's done his whole life. But as the, the general manager of, of a wrestling program, I think he'd be out of this world. Almost like how people used to look at Don West when he'd be hustling baseball cards at 2 o'clock in the morning on the Shop at Home type channels. And then he went on to TNA Impact as a commentator and a, a merchandise man for them. You never know. I just got a know. wicked idea. You I'm looking talk. at your chairs. Yeah. Why don't we put Fabo's face on one? Uh, maybe we can sell Fabo chairs. We can put Berserker. We could put some of the superstars that you're going to have for the signing. You mean you know, pictures like of them? Like WrestleMania chairs. Do you know how much those would cost to have made? Cheap. How much? Cheap, because you know what you do? What do you do? You just go to the printer, and you have them made on a peel-off stick-on, just like you do with... So the... we should give people cheap garbage, in other words. No, it's not garbage. It'll last forever if you do it right. Well, we'll have to talk about that. Yeah, I think it's a good marketing. I, I think it'll work. I'll even pay for three of them to do myself. 
Well, we have to see if Paget would allow them at Memorial oh, Hall. They have to, well, they have to be linked together at the at venue. I, no, no, I have no problem at all. I'll take three of them. I'll put a Fabo on that. Put the million dollar bill across the top. It's good to be great, but it's great to be fabulous. Put that picture on the bottom. Fifty dollars a chair. Twenty five dollars a chair. Gone. Put all the legends' faces gone. on the ass of the chair, and gone. there you go. Gone. 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 Well, we have six weeks to talk about it. That well, would be a we'll nice collectible for the some. That's what fans. I'm saying. Just I know. You know, it's funny that you mention it. At the Cauliflower Alley Club reunion, they had, I think, four made, and they had all of the. Um, the inductees autograph them, and they're going to raffle them off or auction them off or something at this year's. So why not do that, and we'll have them all, everybody autographs that chair. You know, I should ask them how they have them made. It's not an expensive proposition, believe me. As long as we're not spending fifty dollars a chair oh, or something. Absolutely oh, absolutely not. Well, I have no. no idea, John. No. I have no I, I have never had chairs made you could do in a, my life, believe me. As it long or not. as you have the chairs, the silk screening is minimal. Once they do that, you're done. Where would you have the designed? It must be somebody that does silk screening around here. Howard, have you ever had a chair designed? No. no. All right. Well, he has, but not the kind of chair you want. <laughs> Do you want to hear something funny, Johnny? We talked about the members of our crew. What's that? Uh, after a, a, a few hellacious incidents that you witnessed firsthand, uh, to show that you know there's forgiveness in this world. You know who called me at about 12:30 the other night out of the blue? The lion. The Cecil the lion. Yes. After he exploded here on the stage. Uh, that time he walked across the front of the camera to hand you your coffee when we were in the middle of the talk show. He called and apologized for all the trouble that he started. So you know, that says a lot about Cecil. Drugs is a bad thing. Then drugs. or when he made the apology? Um, well, both. He apologized to you because he finally realized in his life all the shit he's got himself into. So let's bring him back. And you know where he was? No. At the world famous Kowloon Entertainment and Dining Complex. On Route 1 in Saugus, Massachusetts. Let's bring him back. Well, you know what? It was interesting, I guess, to hear from him. And I appreciated the, the fact that he went to that length. It's not always easy to say It takes I'm a big sorry. man to apologize. Yeah. yeah, yeah, even if you're a midget. But, uh, well, you'll always be a midget, Marathi. <laughs> a lot to talk about in the world of wrestling. It is WrestleMania season, Johnny. Uh, I know your schedule is jamming up. Mine is jamming up. I had major... Big money appearances lined up for you that you had to turn down. You're so busy. I mean, it, it's just it's that type of year again. We got to get Marty out of bed. We got to get John Newitt out of Fridley, Minnesota. Have you ever been to Fridley, Minnesota? I know that's where Molly Holly lives. She lives in Fridley, Minnesota. In Minnesota. Oh, but not in I, I, Fridley. I don't even, are you making this up? No, that's the name. Of the city. Fridley. Fridley. Almost like friendly, Fridley. Well, okay. Have you ever been to Fridley? No, sir. Have you ever been to Minnesota? Yes, sir. We were in Minnesota. I taught at. Uh, you for taught. The, yep, yep. I used to teach for the Society of Real Estate Appraisers, the American Institute of Real Estate Appraisers, and they would hold co courses. Hotel, teach, leave. That's it. But it wasn't in Fridley. People are very friendly in Minnesota. Uh, aren't they? It's yeah. like another world. They're it's so like, nice. It's like going to Maine. When you cross the line from New Hampshire into Maine, it's like it's another world. People say hello, thank you, excuse me. In Florida, is I don't know what people got against Florida except the heat. It's a whole different world. Thank you, excuse me. Oh, did you want to buy that first? Please, it's yours. No, I'm going to shoot you because it's the last PlayStation 5. Whoa, wait a minute. No. Do you think they have any PS5s in Fridley? Different story for a different time. All right, wrestling fans, getting down to the, the nuts and bolts of what's going on in wrestling. Uh, one of the staples of uh, WrestleMania week, uh, under normal circumstances, I wish they didn't do it last year the way they did in front of no people, but uh, the WWE Hall of Fame, Johnny. Um, something I enjoy. I don't think you were as a big of a fan of it as I am, uh, even under the best of circumstances, but this year apparently it's going to be done with fans. After the SmackDown taping on the Friday night, uh, could make for a long night. <laughs> and you're worried about one night for WrestleMania! No thanks. Uh, Jeff Hardy apparently was offered a, a spot back in the company, in the Hall of Fame, by John Laurinaitis. And uh, Jeff asked if it was just for him or for him and his brother. And I don't know if it's because Matt is an AEW or they don't feel Matt is WWE. Hall of Fame worthy as of yet, but 
He said no. What do you think? What makes Jeff Hardy or Matt Hardy worthy of the Hall of Fame? Considering some of the people that are in there right now, you don't think they're worthy? Considering you got nobody else to put up there. Um, I'm sure that's part of it, too. Yeah. And not, Slim I'm Dickens. Not, and I'm not being derogatory to either of those two outstanding performers. I've worked, I've worked with Matt. Uh, I've never had the opportunity to work with Jeff. Um, Jeff is a great human being. Okay, he has his own issues. And I, and his you own know, demons. I have my stance against drinking and driving, but as far as the human being goes, there's a good soul in there. Okay, that so. That says he had a lot of problems. <clears throat> my theory is that the reason he said no, it's both or none. And to me, that's honorable. It would be like if my son Matt who was originally going to be part of WWE and tag up with his brother John, let's say. Um, if, if John was going to the Hall of Fame, I don't go without my brother. Or my brother doesn't go without me. That's family. Do That's caring. Do you think it may be because Jeff may be in AEW at that point? You know, I don't think it really matters where you are. Um, you think WWE would want to put in an active AEW superstar in the Hall of Fame? You know, the easiest way to win the war is to get into the enemy's camp. Well, it was one thing to induct Billy Gunn before the company had had its first event when Triple H made that little joke during the induction that Vince could buy AEW if he wanted to, and it hasn't quite worked out that way. But No, I'm sure he's made offers. <laughs> and Tony Khan is saying, I have as much, if not more. Yeah, and if not, I think he'd take a quick phone call to his uh, Dad. father that owns the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars and the soccer team. And I believe, is, is, he, is he not an oil baron of yes, some kind? Yes, he is. Yeah. So I, I don't think they, are, they need WWE or anyone else's money. Nope. But as far as running a sensible business, I think they've done a good job with keeping, uh, you know, a, a, a bankroll, so to speak, trying mm -hmm. to keep a, a budget uh, that they don't want to go over. I heard, and I, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to guess it was Owens and Zane, but there were two recent free agents that made overtures to them that they just they weren't able to offer them what they were hoping for which was mega bucks for punk and brian and even adam cole i was told is making far more in aew than he was in uh, wwe so they don't have it for everybody they're not going to be like wcw and just write blank checks which i think is very smart of them well uh owens i respect him and i said it before you said he's got a mega million dollar contract Two or with them. Three a year. If, oh. Okay, but if he's smart enough to negotiate it and it's they're good smart for him. enough to use them, absolutely. That's what it's all about. Because the only product that he has is himself. And that product has a limitation on it. So you might as well get what you can while you can. Um, I just think that they're so afraid of losing more talent, they're willing to do anything to keep it. And they made two big mistakes. You know what they are. We don't have to go into those again. The Fiend. Strowman, why in God's earth? I don't know, but they did it. Um, like I say, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, the, the, again, there have been a lot of questionable releases, but I mean, to re-sign Owens for that much money, I think, is in, was insane. Well, back to the Hall of Fame. Well, back to the Hall of Fame. I uh, think uh, well, Jeff is smart in what he did. If it was for both of them, I think they'd both be in. If it was not, because what they have accomplished, most people remember as a team. The Hardy Boys. Um, then they went on the single road. Well, Jeff was a world champion. I understand. Not to take that away from No, him. I will not. Um, but the fact is that a lot of what was done was done with both. They both helped each other achieve the status that they now carry. So I can appreciate his, him saying no. I think it takes a lot to say no. Because I'll tell you what, just between you and I, I don't think he'll be asked a second time. Do you ever see John Laurinaitis going in? his contributions in the world of wrestling and then later is the uh, Smackdown general manager I enjoyed that character an awful lot um, I think John Laurinaitis had a lot to offer he brought a lot to the show people power yep he did um, main evented on pay-per-view against your son I made again main evented against Randy Orton I'm not <laughs> <laughs> well they're waiting to put you in the celebrity wing from what I'm told uh, I'll tell you what, don't drink any more Fabo Pop because it's not good for you. <laughs> well, we're still trying to figure out if Quincy Rustani stole the Lime Ricky. You got it right there. It's back. No, the green one. 
Oh, the lemon lime. Oh, is that what flavor it lemon is? Lemon lime. Sorry. i got to bring you one of those. Um, to well, I still it. think Rustani had something to do with it. Last time he was here, he was eyeing them. He wanted one, and I said, Quincy, those have been, <laughs> those have been sitting there for some time. They're still good, though. Well, uh, what I should do is have them open up a lemon lime for me and f put a little bit of um, um, extract powder in there. We'll seal it we'll back see up. For sure, and if he it. has a shitty day, we'll know. Well, he, Quincy is anxious to try your soda. He will never forgive Reno for what happened at that event when you trusted him with the pop to oh, sell. Oh, my God. Anyway, that's what it is. It is what it is. The Hatfields and the McCoys. But anyway. Uh, do you think, but anyway, I don't think you answered. Do you think Laurinaitis will ever be in the WWE Hall of Fame? Eventually, but not now. Eventually. All right. um, but again, again, see, the Hall of Fame to me is outstanding above and beyond The Rock, Austin, Mick Foley. You know, that's Hall of Fame material. Um, not that John Laronidas didn't contribute a lot to this business, or his brothers, or our brother, a lot to this business. Um, I think at some time when I see the Hall of Fame inductees, it becomes questionable. Do I just need bodies to stand up at a podium? And that's what's bad about the Hall of Fame. The other thing that I don't like about the Hall of Fame, I'm all with Paul Levesque, Triple H. If you ain't got a building, you shouldn't have a Hall of Fame. You know what? There should be a physical Hall of Fame, and they could have done that at Orlando, Florida, at Universal Studios. You've got a. It would a, have been a great spot. Oh, you've got all this memorabilia. I mean, when you go to Titan Towers, For another there's Andre's store. boots, yep. there's Hogan stuff, there's C Triple H's stuff. It, but I'll say this: I can agree with the Vince McMahon point of view of is that most Hall of Fames lose money every year. How do you keep it fresh? Now, I if think you had we, NXT wrestling, if you had. No, one of the ways you keep that fresh is you, fresh. you develop a 4-D ride that takes you through the world of professional wrestling. Anything. Hey, you're involved in a match. You know, like a Spider-Man ride. Something like that. that are we a stand-up? So would you put the Hall of Fame in the park at oh, that yeah. point? Oh, yeah. Oh, you wouldn't have it on City Walk like it was going to be. No. Because that's where it was going to be. Was I understand on, oh, that. Okay, yeah, okay. no, no. I'd put it. No, you'd never make money there. You'd go broke. No, you go broke. So you think Universal should license it from them and have it in the amusement park? Interesting. Yep. I say I never thought of it like that. Yep, that's where the money is. Howard, you gave us the signal, right? Yes. All right, well, wrestling fans, right now, before Howard comes up with the, with the shovel, uh, give us the Phil DeCesare treatment. We're going to take a brief time out. We'll be back with more as we count down, folks. Six weeks, one day away until we go back to the 80s. Phil DeCesare. Fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Inside His Party with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m. But we're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash, November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep Marty rocking each and every Thursday night. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now for Boston Wrestling MWF's Back to the 80s Live Event and Legends Fan Fest, Saturday, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. See and meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, three-time WWE Tag Team Champions Axe and Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famers Tito Santana and Cowboy Bob Orton, the Wild Berserker, the Indestructible Warlord, Dangerous Danny Davis, and if you great fans step up and get those VIP packages and tickets now, we'll add more 80s WWF legends. VIPs take part in exclusive Q&A sessions in an 80s legends group photo before doors open to all fans for an autograph photo fan fest and a night of hot 
in-ring action for memories that'll last a lifetime while helping our friends from Make-A-Wish. Tell your friends, tell your family. It's the wrestling celebration decades in the making. Lock in the best seats in the party now at bostonwrestling.com. We'll see you live April 16th. Wrestling fans around the corner around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Johnny, the momentum here in Boston wrestling continues as we continue to build and build and build. The fans want to know, how do we help? We subscribe to the Patreon. But we see all the great merchandise on that set. Coronavirus may have killed the nightlife, especially for someone like Marty. But, but, our acclaimed eBay store is open 24-7 around the world. Wow. Check it out. Support Wrestling Insiders and keep wrestling legends working on eBay. At Survivor Series, it was champion versus champion as WWE champion Drew McIntyre battled Universal champion Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman. Get this 11 by 14 poster autographed by all three men. Limited edition number 42 of only 50 with authentication hologram on the back of the poster itself. Comes with a mystery autographed 8x10 photo and an on-air shout-out from WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas on Wrestling Insiders at your house. Get it now. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Insiders Special Edition as we uh, have sometimes, like I said, the banter in between uh, segments sometimes is just as fun as the show itself. I hope the fans enjoy it. If you're ever on the Mass Pike out by Worcester, don't break down. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Johnny, I know you were sad that one of your favorite wrestling programs has come to an end. Uh, 205 Live is <laughs> no longer in existence. It's, it's been replaced by NXT Level Up. Um, I don't know if that's a way to try and combat AEW Rampage Friday nights at 10 by giving it the, the NXT brand label as opposed to a lifeless show that had... Uh, guys that were weighed more than 205 pounds and really no one watched at all. Um, did you ever watch 205 Live? Once. No. <laughs> Not interested. Will you tune into NXT Level uh, I don't even watch Level NXT. Up. I don't even watch NXT. When it's on the USA Network? I don't even watch. You haven't seen the A champion, I, Carmelo Hayes? I don't. No, sir, I have not. Johnny. You know what? My feelings are hurt. I enjoy and I love professional wrestling. I do. Um, I try to watch as much of it as I can. I watch a lot of reruns uh, where it's believable. The classics. Yep. Um, I just think that they have done such a disservice. Modern day sports entertainment isn't for you. It is in some cases when it's done right. Well, I'll ask you this, Johnny. Do you think it was wise, from a business point of view, to rebrand 205 Live that no one really cared about, had a vested interest in, or was watching, uh, and rebrand it with almost like a, a, is a B NXT show to give the younger guys that they're not working, they don't have the house shows down there anymore, to give guys a chance to get a little uh, video exposure, maybe is the best way to put it. I don't think it's going to draw a very... A, a gigantic audience on Friday night at 10. But you know what? It's good for the library as time goes on. And those guys from NXT level up go to NXT and go to Raw and SmackDown. They'll have footage of them from when they were extremely young for future video packages. I know they're not going to do DVDs anymore. But uh, do you think that's a wise rebranding of the Friday night show? Or would you have just done away with it completely? I think I'd have been better off just to do away with it. Why? So, I could get that kind of response from you. <laughs> but no, honestly, if it was, if you were the. All right, let's be real. First of all, who's watching NXT? Uh, Six hundred or so thousand people a week. Good. So, how many people are going to watch the rebranding show? NXT level up. Mm. Oh, if they hit six figures, I would be surprised. So, what would you do? If it's not costing them any extra money, if they're doing it the same way. Well, they're night. just filling a slot. That's all they're doing. They're just well, swapping the product and yeah, renaming yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, So here's my answer to that. It's already there. Let's see if we can make it a little bit better. Give it a shot. That's it. I think if, they have a better chance of attracting an audience with it having the NXT label than 205 Live. You know what happens? And you know, oh, go ahead. NXT is losing its luster. Oh, so, say that again. You know what? Unless you can really get the diamond to shine... 
Why put any more money into it? Well, I agree with you with what you're saying, but I also agree with the viewpoint of let's give these guys, we have 100, and, 100 or so guys and girls under contract down in Orlando, let's give them something to do. Let's give them a chance to at least work in front of video cameras and learn how to work a small crowd down there that they have at the Performance Center and how to work the different camera angles and to take part in, unfortunately, what looks like will be vignettes and skits and things like that that will continue. You know, I say if that's the way they're going to push them and use them on Raw and SmackDown, the sooner they learn it and the sooner they know how to execute it, the better. I don't disagree with that. I think that's a very smart move. That, that facility that Triple H built is unbelievable. It's a college campus for professional wrestling. Um, I'm just concerned about the way the product's being handled now and where it will go from now. Could go right in the garbage if they're not going to correct what they're doing. Um, but I do agree with what you're saying, and that's unusual for me. But um, you know what? You've got to have a place to train. You've got to have a place to prepare for. You know, as much as UPW, when, it, when I first was aware of it, Ultimate Pro Wrestling in California. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yep, that's where John started. Um, if you look at, and I, I have that, that show, Inside Pro Wrestling, um, one of the things that I was impressed at was they did on camera, that was part of the course. They did promos, that was part of the course. They did ring psychology, that was part of the course. If that's what their intent is, it's worth every penny. Because when you get them to the biggest show, up there to Raw and SmackDown, they already understand what it takes to get out there and perform. The thing I see wrong today in the indie shows and even in the, the upper ranks is they don't know how to read the crowds. They don't know how to, how to react to the situation. They don't know how to sell. They just have lost it all. All they care about is getting in the ring. And you know, Cam Zagami proved that, getting your shine. That was it. That's not what this business is all about. You know, you tell a guy or you tell a young lady, um, Marathi's going over tonight. Well, geez, that, that can't happen. Wait a second. What are you being paid? 200 bucks. What am I being paid? 200 bucks. What difference does it make who goes over? As long as those people right there in those seats are happy, we take care of each other, and we both walk out of here safe. Who cares about win or lose? That's why people would say to me, oh, well, he doesn't have the belt anymore. You know he doesn't have the belt anymore? Because he doesn't need it anymore. Or it's over. He's going to be taking a back seat. Don't you understand how this works? And I agree with those comments to diehard wrestling fans. But they're doing the right thing. They should continue to do that. More wrestling schools should have that capability. Because the people we're getting now are not trained. They are not trained. They're sent off to the independents with a lot of bad habits. They're not even trained to get in that ring. And get some, in that not ring. all cases, but some. I've worked with some young people. I've been smacked in the face three or four times. I go, I go back and, wouldn't you train how to throw a punch? Let me try. Come on. Um, you know what's sad, though, Johnny? I look at 205 Live, again, you hate to use the terminology, missed opportunity. That original roster right now, I tell you this, I'd put it on par maybe with the original AEW roster from A to Z when it debuted in 2019 compared to what 205 Live had when it came to life in 2016. So many great talents, misused, jobbed out, looked down upon because of their size, turned into comedic jokes. Ah. But I mean, you know, that, I, thought, I think it would almost make for an interesting show sometime for us to look at. What was the original roster for 205 Live when it debuted in 2016. And what happened to all of those guys? Mustafa Ali is one of the last ones left and they won't <laughs> let him out of his contract. Why? Free Ali. I don't get it. Why? They'll, they'll get rid of everybody else on the planet that doesn't want to go. Why? Uh, ego, I guess. They don't want to say, okay, you can go, but we'll let everybody else that wants to stay go. How much longer does he get his contract? Two and a, he wrote something on Twitter the other day. I'll see you guys in two and a half years. So <laughs> quite a while, I'm guessing. You know what I say, and I'm being a wise guy. All right. I love wrestling. But if I were getting $3 million a year, and you said you can't get in the ring, you can't wrestle, I'd find me a nice little day job, 
and collect that three million every year, I'd be a happy oh, kid. Oh, well, wait a minute. Well, better than Johnny. All right, wrestling fans, it'll be interesting to see the future of Mustafa Ali. I think I've said it before, Johnny, on this show. Uh, if not, it was with Oscar, but if he's ever available, I'd love to see Mustafa Ali in a Boston Wrestling MWF ring. I would definitely look forward to that. Outstanding individual, a lot of talent, brings a lot to the game. He'd make everyone else on the roster level up, no pun intended. Well, that's we need that. Well, Johnny, uh, speaking of maybe leveling down a little bit, uh, you, you, you're almost in-laws. Uh, the Bellas uh, seem to be reinvigorated by their appearance at the Royal Rumble. And they're very anxious to try and get back into the squared circle again and make a run for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship belts. Uh, just when we thought it was over after all the acclaims of their injuries and their, their broken necks and their broken down bodies like they were Dory and Terry Funk, um, it appears they want more of a run. I don't even know if one more. They haven't been gone long enough, really. To just like Jaws. Every time the shot came back, they blew it up and killed it. You know what? All I got to say is this. They do have an in. When? They do have an in. Oh, an in. Oh, an in. Yes. In. Yes. So that's a plus for them. It's a minus for the fans if they do it. I think the reception they got when they came back was not very good. So and usually at the Royal Rumble, every legend, and not that I'm calling them legends, but every superstar from the past that comes back gets a great reaction. And theirs was tepid. Yeah. There was now, really no different well, than they, someone like They'll be like in the Hall of Fame next. They're already in. There you go. See? Oh. What, what does that say about the Hall um, of Fame? They were scraping, and no offense. We're really looking for people to go in. And, and, and you know what? You joke about me going to the Celebrity Hall of Fame and all this stuff. First of all, I look at some of the uh, people, uh, fathers, who did what they did for their daughters or sons in the encyclopedia. I didn't even make that. I might have made the toilet paper in the men's room, but that's about it. Uh, not that I'm bragging. I'll say it. Hooray for me. But um, Wow. All I got to say is, wow. And then I look at these two individuals and I say, so really and truly, ladies, and forget who they are or what they are. I'm just a fan. <laughs> ladies, what have you done that warrants you the Hall of Fame? Really and truly, I don't see a damn thing outstanding in what you've done that warrants you to get the ring. Maybe get the finger, but not the ring. Well, but I, I'll bite my tongue with what I was going to say to that. But yeah, don't do it. I would say as far as the Hall of Fame goes, I really can't cast blame on them. That was the decision maker's choice. My problem with them is, is just they were never very good, and they never took the initiative to get much better. Because they didn't have to. Because you remember that when they were doing their thing, what was the key thing that they were pushing with the women's division? TNA. That was the key thing. You didn't go to watch women wrestle. You wanted to hope there was a nip slip. You were hoping that, that one of the uniforms or the wrestling things didn't fit just right. No, and, and Vince had these stupid matches. Vicky Guerrero in a mud match or a, come on, a briar and panties match, a pillows match where they get these scanty, that's where they fitted. Then it came time to say, now you've got to prove yourself as a professional wrestler. You weren't a fan of the briar and panties matches. Oh, please. You know what? Total misuse of professional wrestlers, women, women who are outstanding in what they do, being degraded and brought down to zero. The fact is, they all did it, and they, they did it because that's what they were involved in. That was their job, that was their position. Um, I'm sure if a lot of the ladies look back on it now, I'm sure they'll have a difference of opinion. The Bellas, again, I can't take a lot away from them. I can't give them a lot either. Well, and, there's not much to take and, away. And, and, forget about, <laughs> and forget about where they are or who they were going to yeah. be or whatever. Yeah. Um, let me tell you something. To put those two people, this year's Hall of Fame? It was last year. Yeah. In Tampa. That shows you how much and I they watched. they threw Bailey down the ramp yep. in yep. the rain with Titus O'Neil and Hulk mm. Hogan dressed as pirates. Yep. Well, guess what? Then they started dancing with them as pirates. The only thing they didn't do was have the ship 
and that should have been the Titanic. <laughs> You know, I, I I get in trouble for what I say. That's where they that's where their careers belong. Yeah, I get that's in, what their matches felt like. I get in trouble a lot. I get phone calls that you shouldn't say that. Well, you know what? I guess I am who I am. I say you what shoot. I feel, and um, you shoot. You don't have to like me. We just have to respect each other. And um, look, those ladies were who they were when they were. They got in many cases what they got because of who they were with. Um, and I'm not being facetious. No, it, I think you're right. Why don't you just let it go, ladies? Because the reception you're going to no get... There's no one asking for it. No one, other than them, no one wants it. No, well, maybe the guy in charge of talent relations does. Um, and that could be just, well, you know what they say, happy Happy wife, wife happy, happy life. life. Yeah. Um, but there again, well, that's their manager. <laughs> their manager is their mom. Oh, I didn't even know that. She's a great oh. person. No, oh, she's, I know. she's a great businesswoman. Um, and... Um, but the whole thing is very simple. You're done. It's over. You know what? Forget Tell you what you do. Why don't you start a wrestling school? Oh. There you go. Let now them you'll go have make their wine. No, that, let the... them go dance with the stars again. Wait a second. Wait, 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 where can you buy their wine? Didn't didn't they open a winery or a vineyard Gone. or something? They <laughs> oh, had online children's clothes. Gone. <laughs> they... That's right. They did. Yeah, the, the, what did they name it? Birdie or something like I that? I don't know one what they kids? called it. Birdie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And I'm sitting back and I'm going, please, for a lady that didn't want to have any children right away. Yeah, she had a kid Nikki, pretty Nikki, quick. Yeah, Nikki sure proved that, yep, yep. And so I just kind of sit back and say, you do what you want. Just remember when you come back, if you come back, you think you'll be open, welcome arms. It'll probably be another mistake that Vince makes, but it'll be like, thank you for your, and good luck on your future endeavors after the first three months, because you bring nothing to the table. Well, can they just find something to do outside of the world of wrestling? I told you, open a wrestling school. No, even that's involved with wrestling. Anything other than wrestling. I mean, you, granted, but the wine they... in the children's clothes didn't go so good, but, I mean, is there, do they, have, you know them, or do they have any talents that you know of? They are very nice people. But do they have any talents? Yes, All Nikki right. and, 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 and her sister. Could they open a charm school? Uh, they'd be great in a cosmetic line. Okay. Uh, they'd be great. Uh, Nikki's a, Nikki would be great in the corporate world as her sister because they're very um, well-schooled, negotiating, and talk. Aw awesome kids. Believe me, I have nothing, nothing bad to say except you didn't do well in professional wrestling. You got a D on the report card. That's it. That's it. So, you know, maybe AEW wants you. Oh. Let them go. But those are probably two of the types that they wouldn't want to go. Hall of Fame. Oh. That just did it for me. You know, I, I, I should have remembered last year. What about dancing with Titus O'Neil and Hulk Hogan when they were dressed as pirates on the stage? <clears throat> Let's put it this way. I think I went up and charged my phone at that point. But see, once again, everything's got a price. Hogan and Titus, how much you get paid for that? <laughs> Half a million. Okay, and if they asked oh, you to shit on the stage, would you have done it? Yep. That was the rap, Howard? No. Oh, 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 all right. Howard Millis, he's confusing me, which isn't easily done. It is. All right, wrestling fans are running out of time now after burying the Bellas. Leave your thoughts in the uh, premiere chat or the comment section below uh, with your thoughts on uh, perhaps the Bellas coming back for a big women's tag team title run. Uh, we'll be back after this brief timeout. Wrestling fans, spring kicks off with the in-studio return of the Berserker, John Nord, Thursday, April the 14th, to kick off Back to the 80s live wrestling in Legends Fan Fest weekend. The Berserker returns for Wrestling Insider Throwback Thursday tapings, live episodes, a cyber autograph signing, and more. Check out Boston Wrestling's exclusive print that the Berserker will sign to you live on the air. The big man kicks off three big days of action, excitement, and memories. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now for Boston Wrestling MWF's Back to the 80s live event and Legends Fan Fest, Saturday, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. See and meet WWE Hall of Famer, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, three-time WWE Tag Team Champions, Axe and Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famers, Tito Santana and Cowboy Bob Orton, 
the Wild Berserker, the indestructible warlord, dangerous Danny Davis. And if you great fans step up and get those VIP packages and tickets now, we'll add more 80s WWF legends. VIPs take part in exclusive Q&A sessions in an 80s legends group photo before doors open to all fans for an autograph photo fan fest and a night of hot in-ring action for memories that'll last a lifetime while helping our friends from Make-A-Wish. Tell your friends, tell your family, it's the wrestling celebration decades in the making. Lock in the best seats in the party now at bostonwrestling.com. We'll see you live April 16th. It hits different live as the road to WrestleMania comes through State College with the head of the table, Roman Reigns. And a new challenger has emerged to dethrone the queen. Face me and put your title on the line. As Naomi battles Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship, it's the WWE Road to WrestleMania Tour, live in State College March 26. Tickets and superstar experience packages on sale now. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And this is the man of the hour, Leo Rush. It was all over bostonwrestling.com and our social media. But Leo, brother, they got to check out some of this merch. They got to. Check it out, fans, right now available on eBay. Arguably the greatest professional wrestler of all time. Get this limited edition collector's autograph print personally signed by two-time WWE Hall of Famer Nature Boy Ric Flair inscribed 16 times for each of his recognized world championship reigns. One of only 50 made direct from our friends at WWE. Also signed by original artist Rob Schamberger. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome Ric Flair collectible for your wrestling collection now. Johnny, it is unbelievable. We are just a hair over six weeks away from the big one at Memorial Hall, Melrose, Massachusetts, Saturday night, April the 16th. We're going back to the 80s with superstars that you want to see, unlike the Bellas, that provided you with a lifetime of memories in your childhood, unlike the Bellas, who turned fans off that they started to vanish from watching TV by the millions each year. But that's all. Because right. of the Bellas? Well, I don't think they help. Woo! Do you? Wow, you're getting bad. Do you? You know what I say? Why don't we bring the Bellas in for signing? You know what? They probably do. Our, I don't know how much they'd judge, but I imagine there'd be a lot of fans that would be willing to pay money to see them. I cannot take anything away from the fact that they draw that people still would like to see the Bellas. But I dis- not in the ring. I disagree with the drawing aspect of it. I think they have a fan base of those that are fans of them, that is extremely diehard. And limited. And limited. There you go. All right. We agree on that. Johnny, I didn't realize uh, Howard Miller almost came out again to uh, decesory us, but uh, one more thing before we go, as we continue to implore the fans to head on over to bostonwrestling.com, get those VIP packages and tickets, uh, we have talked many times about potentially WWE being for sale. Um or going to be for sale in the future and possible different suitors, uh, it looks like perhaps another avenue, another door, at least as far as business relationships is open, where uh, WWE is partnered, I believe, for the very first time with Disney to bring uh, WWE Network to uh, India. What do you think? What thoughts on that? Do you think it could be uh, something we look back on in a few years and say, wow, that's where it all began? It did. That's right. Um, again, once again, the concentration doesn't seem to be on professional wrestling. It seems to be on garnering these side deals which create billions, billions, which means that a company that was probably worth, I'm joking, $20 billion is now double that number. It's in a real good shine to be bought up and taken over. However, when that happens, you know that the chairman of the board will always be the chairman of the board, no matter if it's sold or not. Stephanie will always have a spot. Triple H will have a spot. Shane O'Mac maybe yeah, might have a spot. <laughs> Linda McMahon always has a spot. Linda McMahon's been gone since 2009, Johnny. What spot do you think she's going to have? Do you know something? She's 70 something years old. Wait a minute. Well, and well, works for Trump. Do you really think she's interested in wrestling? Works for Trump? Well, she works for one of the super PACs. Well, that's great, but you know well, what? Well, heads up one of the super PACs. God bless... Do you think she has time to worry about SmackDown? God bless Donald Trump, but you know what? He's doing the same thing he did when he was president. 
did a lot of good things, but he's not keeping his mouth shut. He's just burying himself even further. So run in 2000. I didn't even know that. Run in 2024. Keep making the accusations. They're trying to bury people, and people are tired now. You think Sleepy's going to make it to 2024? Never. Neither is Kamala There's Harris. There's not a lot of movement going on with him. I don't see much or hear much from him. I would think he'd He's be... Like, I think we see more of Goldberg each year than we do Joe Biden. He'd probably resign by June. <laughs> by June? Why do you say that? It's my birthday. Oh, all right. Well, you're looking for an early gift, I guess. But hey, anyway... Him and Harris. All joking aside... Whoop, um, oh, the, you're talking about Kent... Kamala, Kamala, the Harris. vice president. Not I thought Kamala. You meant, uh, Kamala. Not Kamala. Uh, He's the gone. Ugandan giant, unfortunately. I, ra- I work with him. Yeah, he was great with us in the beginning, but he was a great we, guy we to work with in the ring. Loins cloth video. Well. Um, uh, do you think Khan is looking to open up perhaps uh, a, a bidding war that includes Disney, uh, NBC Universal, who they're in bed with with both uh, US, uh, uh, NXT, Raw, and WWE Network? Uh, Fox pays a, a premium price for SmackDown each week. Uh, Freddie Prince Jr., the actor, who is a very lucky man, married to one of my all-time favorites, uh, the lovely Sarah Michelle Gellar, uh, said that uh, when the negotiations were going down for SmackDown, that WWE pitched Fox by the entire company, but I guess the price was outrageous, what they were asking for, so they just decided to take SmackDown on for five years. Do you think he, they'd attempt to try and create a bidding war between the three entities? Yep, that's Vince. Do you think that any of these up-and-coming streaming services would be interested? Could you see someone like Netflix wanting to buy WWE? No. 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 Do you think, uh, it would kind of be odd, but I mean, if it, let's per se a sale went through over the next couple of years, where WWE Network is licensed to Peacock and NBC, for at least four more, well, I don't know, let's just say four to make it easy, uh, a Disney-owned company on NBC's streaming platform before it could go to the Disney streaming. That would make more sense. But wouldn't it be odd, as would be my question, if you di- just per se Disney bought WWE... Which they would. ...and the network would be on NBC's Peacock. They wouldn't get, who cares? You don't think they'd get? Cash is cash, isn't it? Out of those three, could you see uh, in a, a bidding war gone wild? You, I Fox think, was big on the idea of WWE because they were getting for, I think, less money, 52 weeks a year of WWE as opposed to 17 weeks a year of UFC. Obviously, WWE has a relationship with the USA Network slash NBC going back to the 80s. Disney is always looking for content, content, content. And Disney has the money. Disney's got the money. Disney's baby. got the money. So my money would be on Disney. Uh, Disney saying, yes, we'll take it. Look at it. You've had Disney stuff on Netflix. You've had Disney stuff on HBO Max. They don't care where their product is as long as it goes ka-ching. And if they did it, it's on Peacock. Have a nice day. Guess in the bottom line who gets the money at the end of the week. We do. They don't really care. I'll tell you this, though. I think one of the things that you've got to be careful of is professional wrestling is not as popular as it used to be. Right. So does the investment warrant the return? There may be no return. You well, can't pay all this money and have no return. I think, I think um, you know, the TV stations are sitting back. Fox Network is going, well, we expected to get 20 million viewers. We're not getting that. We're not getting our money's worth. It's too bad. The chairman of the board would sit and say, I signed the contract. So do you. That's it. It's over and done with. So they're building, in my opinion, only my humble opinion, a saleable product. Very saleable. Not in terms of professional wrestling, but in terms of bottom line income. And content. You got it. The content. It's content galore. All right, wrestling fans, we are running out of time, Johnny. Again, if you had to make a pick, or I, I, I'm going to say a number. UFC, I think, went for about four. What do you think WWE goes for once billion? it's sold? Four billion, yeah. Oh, WWE solds? It's got to be in ten billion, twelve billion dollars. Really? I think. Oh, way up there. Right around there. Way up there. Oh. Yeah, I, I can't see it. Maybe eight, eight to twelve. You think it at least doubles UFC? Oh, easy. Easy. All right. Well, all right, wrestling fans. What do you think about all the fun, crazy we talked about here in the world 
of professional wrestling. Again, as we're less than six weeks away from our Back to the 80s extravaganza, share your thoughts in the premiere box to your right. If you're not watching during the premiere on Friday night, shame on you for missing the fun. But there's always the description box below. But there's, forget about description boxes and premiere chats, Johnny. There's only one place the fans are going to want to be six weeks from tomorrow night. Forget about Dudleyville. We're talking about 590 Main Street Memorial Hall in Melrose, Mass. Saturday night, April the 16th. Piggottville becomes MWFville when we go back to the 80s with Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Axe and Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famous Tito Santana, and Cowboy Bob Orton, the wild and unpredictable berserker, the warlord, dangerous Danny Davis, and I'm hearing rumors you may have another announcement Monday night. I will. You and your announcements, my God. All right, wrestling fans, for uh, Linda Dano, my Joe Ouellette, uh, uh, what was the other one's name? Elizabeth Hubbard, all these other Bozaks that all want a piece of them. John Cena Sr., I wish I could have just some of the cast-offs, some of the rainwater. Done. You know what I mean? Done. I can't get any. You, know, you think maybe I can get great outdoors? Done. Done. Easy. Would great you care? Out. Nope. Well, I know you said that was a sensitive subject for you. No, it's all right. It, well, you know, people's uh, with exes and so on and so I, forth. You know what? You'd it, be, it you'd, is what it is. It wouldn't create any friction between no, us. No, sir. I, I go out to, yeah. If I captured the heart of great outdoors. Absolutely. Go for it. <laughs> I'm Dan Marotti, folks. Until we speak again, or even the computer's telling us, we'll see you next Friday night at 11 o'clock after AEW Rampage. You and yours, be healthy, be well. Good night from Boston. Take it away, Phil. Hi, this is Phil DeCesare. Thank you for enjoying tonight's Wrestling Insiders. Get early full screen ad-free access to all our weeknight Wrestling Insider episodes while helping keep wrestling legends working by joining the Boston Wrestling Patreon family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. You can directly help us bring you more great historical wrestling content seven days a week to enjoy for years to come.